Um, we were talking, but when you just sat down, we were talking about Raider Clan. Right. You said someone had a hot take that you didn't. I don't want to talk about it. Okay, okay. I don't want to talk about that. It felt like that was like a four or five years too early because the rest of the music industry kind of caught up to Florida on a commercial level in terms of signing artists and stuff in what, like right. 2014, 15, 16? 2015, like, 16. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, like 2017. Yeah, and then it was roughly. like, so, but, but you know, what you guys were doing was so influential, not on just like the world, but obviously just hip-hop even to this day it's like kind of crazy yeah you know? i've been trying to tell everybody that bro like and it's crazy because like you know i'm um, talking with some of the guys that was in asap and talking to um other raider clan members that i'm still cool with um we was talking about all that shit bro like if clan and asap would have never beef like the blueprint would have never got out and yeah. a lot of us would have been making money to this day with like as a conglomerate Together. exactly if rocky and perk would have never started beefing mm. now that's real it was that was kind of like the uh it's, it's a you know there's all those like what ifs in hip hop yeah. that's a big what if so my main thing is when I was making an album and having like Ferg on it and ASAP Rocky mm -hmm. on it it was more so showing like what could have been if we weren't at odds you even got Key Nayada everybody like oh he working with ASAP da 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 uh nigga I even got Key Nayada on his album you yeah. know what I'm saying and I'm gonna be working with other Raider Clan members that I'm not gonna name right now you just gonna you just gonna hear them you know what I'm saying I gotta tell you this new album cause I felt like your last album was 2022, right? Yeah. And I, I think I ranked it like three or four top album of the year. when I, I actually got into an argument with the game about you off camera. It was hilarious. What? Because I posted that you had like, I think the fourth best album of the year. I don't even want to know what it was. It was hilarious. Anyway, I, I was there. like, bro, if you listen, you should go listen. Anyway. But uh, he actually did make a post about me, Vince Staples. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, but before that, I told him like, you got to go listen. I said to Malik, like, this album is a, a perfect, it's like a perfect album. Like, but it's so crazy because I feel like fast forward two years and your new album, by the way, I've ran through it like six times. One of the best albums just to work out to, by the way, for everybody who likes to fucking get your pump in. This is classic. You're taking it back. I guess you would say like, you know, the alt Denzel. Like this is kind of like classic Denzel. Like this is fuck, bro. The record with Mike Dean, Two Chains, and then that record, Mike with, Dean, Mike Dimes, or Mike Dimes. My bad. But the but but the record with fucking Kenny Mason is so crazy. Right, right. This the whole album is just like it's it's, it's fire. And then I want you to kind of give me before we talk about the motivation, yo. You having Skinny Pimp kind of narrate the whole... For people who don't know, I only remember him as a kid from the Source Magazine ads he would have. Mm. But he's like a Memphis legend. Oh, hell And up. he narrates the project. Right. What was the... Well, first of all, how did you find him? First off, um, King Pimp, Skinny Pimp knew me from back then, from when I was in Raider Clan and all that stuff. From no, but I remember in him day. in the 90s. No, I'm like, I was listening to his music around the time where right. I was like doing all the like, da -da 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 yeah. back when I was in um, Care City. I got introduced to Kingpin Skinny Pimp um, as a, you know, like over the phone through my homie Renegade from way back in the day. I was at his house, like me and, um, I was at Renegade house on 191 and we was like chilling and shit and he was like, bro, I got Skinny Pimp over the phone and then me and him was talking and I talked to Skinny Pimp. That was the first time I like really met Skinny Pimp yeah. was over the phone. And then we followed each other and that's it been like that ever since. So what was like you approaching him to kind of, you know, narrate the album? Was it pretty as it was it pretty easy? It was very easy. All I did was just reach out and he hit me back and got his number. We talked about it. I sent him the tracks and then he sent me all the stuff that he did, like all the narration and stuff. And then he was just like Hey, feel free to sample um, any of my old stuff, right? So right. that's why you get like um, Lunatic uh, and some Give Me Some Family stuff on the album. Like, and I was just like, wow. I was like, man, can I sample uh, King of the Players Ball? He was like, nah, like not that one. Not but that one. Any anything on um, Skinny Pump Volume 1, you could sample. And I was like, all right, cool. And Probably like a easier like for label situations and I'm, yeah, I'm assuming yeah. yeah that's I thought that was cool as hell and then you obviously had Project Pat on the app they got some features on this thing yeah man. Project Pat was also a cool ass person to work with too because like you know he was just like hey I'll do it and here's the set price and here's what it is and that's what it was yeah what was um for you like this is more I feel like a callback to like classic Denzel, like was that just for you? Like, yo, that's why I, I feel like it, it had a real mixtape feel. Was that on purpose? Like, yo, oh, for sure. Last time I did like a real introspective 
deep dive into me. It was a, your most vulnerable body of work you've ever yeah. done. And it was very, very like sonically different than you. I feel like you, you kind of just were at, like, like you explored a lot of dope things. Yeah, I mean, you got to look at my whole career. Like every time I did an album, it was a different theme and I changed up every single time, but I gave you little hints and remnants that I'm still doing the same thing. It's just over a different beat and I'm telling you a different story and I'm telling you where I'm at in my life at the moment. Right. So I'll treat them like diary entries, right? Or journal entries. And then when it came down to the mixtape, I was just like, listen, bro, I was working on two things at once one album over here and another tape over here so i was like all right when i wasn't going to the studio over here working on this tape i was working on this one i was trying to make another magnum opus that had bangers on it but i was like damn this is gonna take a long time so let me do something in the meantime to uh hold fans over and we was just getting both done right so when I finished like this one, when I finished KOTMS, it wasn't even called KOTMS at first. It was um, Blood In, Blood Out Reloaded because the first Blood In, Blood Out was just a mix of all the old songs that I had from Imperial right. to Taboo to Zoo that didn't make the cut, but they were still good. And they was just cohesive. And that's how Blood In, Blood Out, the first mix came out the same year Unlock came out. So when it came down to this one, I was just like, all right, shit, I'm going to try to um, put out multiple projects this year. So that's why I was working on two at the same time, right, with two different vibes. And sometimes the vibes would cross over. This got finished, and then I sent it, sent all the tracks to my manager and my um, DJ, and they was putting stuff together. Once they got it all together, and it was Kingpin, Skinny Pimps, like um, interludes and everything, like, they was like, hey, bro, this is hard. And, um, you don't you shouldn't change anything about this but the name. And that's mm. how KOTMS Volume Two happened because I was trying to make um King of the Mysterious South Volume Two since back in 2014, 2015. And it just never took um took shape until I wasn't even thinking about it and subconsciously it was made. Yeah. Now so you're also working on another album. Yeah, I'm working on several different things. I don't stop working. Well, I mean, we've had a, a couple of years, right? I mean, you've obviously popped up on a lot. Oh, by the way, you and our, I love you and Armani White's uh just your chemistry is crazy because the record you yeah. did with him last year was fucking was it oh, last go to it go that to shit it. was hard yeah but um I, I mean it's been a couple of years right so you're 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 gonna not make fans wait as long for this uh for 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 you know we got an album now i'm assuming look i'm working on two different things what else I, you working I, on I, I can't tell you but all i could tell you is that i got one done you said a magnum opus though i got one done but the it's, magnum opus is not done <laughs> when you say, okay, how do you know if it's the magnum opus? Oh, I know. You know. I know. Okay. Uh, so you have another one that's done on top of this one. Yeah. Solo. Yeah. Oh. I can't tell you though. I can't. I don't can tell you that I got another tape done. That's the only thing I can say. 